Hey, listen, do you think pour over coffee is the cat's meow? Well, so do we, but we're going to take it up a notch using the pour over coffee maker here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Sagatuck, and welcome to the Obus Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about the pour over coffee maker. <laughs> Not the pour over, but the pour over. And I don't know if you can see, but it's sort of in the shape of a cat. That is adorable. It's silly, but fun. And um, we're going to take this straight out of the box. And the idea here is we're going to decide whether this is something we want to keep, something we want to give away, or something we just want to crush and eliminate from the face of the earth. <laughs> right? Those are our choices. Uh, but we're going to go through uh, a regular pour over exercise here. Did I say pour over? You pour can. over exercise here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a traditional pour over, uh, now I can't even say pour or pour over. It's like, <laughs> pour over uh, could be something like a Melita. Uh, it could be a Kalita. It could be the Hario V60. Uh, it could be a Chemex, right? All those use the same principles and we're going to apply the same principles here today. Now, the pour over is about $25. Uh, one thing you should know, you can get two Melita pour over holders for $9. So there is a difference. Uh, Two yeah. Melitas for nine dollars? Yeah, they. I mean, I think they're so inexpensive that they package two in them to get the price up to nine dollars, you know, on Amazon or whatever. So, uh, you know, a Hario decanter uh, would cost you uh, a little bit more. That would cost about twenty six dollars, twenty seven dollars. So this is in the price range of that, but it has its own little design aesthetic. So let me go ahead and uh, unpackage this for us. And we have some instructions right out the gate. And the one thing I do want to know is the ounce on this. And it's 350 milliliters, if you would try to remember that for us, babe. Got it. And uh, they say 25 grams of coffee, but that doesn't sound right to me. But we'll, we'll check that out here in just a minute. Uh, we've got, this is ceramic. So we have a, a, a nice ceramic cup here, although feels like the handle's upside down, doesn't it? Like you'd want to hold the handle this way, yeah. but it's going that way, right? A little weird. All right. And, um, but it feels like, you know, sort of solid ceramic. And here is, I think, the purr part of the, of the purr over. And you got the cat's tail right here and the cat's ears right here. And there's a nose and two eyes. I don't know if you can if you can catch that right there. Yeah, it's but, it is uh, very cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it and it sits like this. So you would be purring over into your own little cup right here. And um, I do note that there's two uh, big holes in the bottom. You know, the Hario has one big hole like that, and the Melita has. Uh, one single hole like that. So this would be uh, theoretically uh, a pretty fast flowing um, filter process, right? Mm -hmm. With those two big holes like that. All right. Uh, they say you should use a Melita filter. And if you don't know what a Melita filter looks like when you go to the grocery store, it looks like that. It's a Melita number two. And whenever we have a Melita filter and I have a number two right here, um, it looks just like that. And the difference between that and the Hario is the Hario comes to a point, the Melita is sort of flat on the bottom. And whenever we do uh, filters, we always fold them on their crimp lines. I don't know if you can see that there's like these crimp lines right yeah. here. And it's very traditional to fold them over and then kind of open them up like this. And, and it goes and it it's a pretty nice fit. It doesn't seem like it's fitting because it's not wet yet, but we are going to wet this down because, you know, with a pour over, it's very traditional uh, to uh, 
saturate the filter and get out the filter taste. And so you want to get it all wet. And then the other thing that you always want to do is to heat up these containers, right? So when I took them out of the box, they were still a little bit chilled, but putting this hot water through the paper filter will rinse off the paper taste from there, but it will also heat up this part of the vessel and that part of the vessel so that when we start pouring our water through and the coffee comes out, that the heat isn't stolen from it, right? And so we have this little silly product here, but we're still gonna take it seriously how we make this product. Okay, so it was 350 milliliters, and, and traditionally what we use is six grams per 100 milliliters, right? So that would put us in the 21 range they're recommending 25. I think that's a little bit too much. Uh, we know our coffee, we're using Big B Best here today. So we're gonna go with 21 grams of coffee and we're gonna grind that for a typical pour over a Hario or something like that. Let me see if I can get that scale started up there. And I'm gonna tear it out. There we are at zero. We're gonna look for 21 grams. Does that sound right to you? Six grams per 100? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if they wanted you to use more because it goes so fast. I wonder if that was the idea. Maybe. I'm at 23, right? Uh, yeah, you are at 23. 21, oh on God. the nail. Wow. How often do, do I hit it on the nail? Not that often. Right? It's tricky. Okay, it is tricky. I'm going to give it a little spray uh, with the spritzer. It's just water, and that reduces static electricity. Uh, when we put it in the grinder. And we're going to start the grinder ahead of time and pour it in. But of course, I'm going to turn it off because I did pre-grind coffee today. So uh, it's ready to go at uh, about 21 grams. Let's see if I do have 21 grams. Let's, let's re-verify that. I'm at zero. 20.7. 20. 20. Well, Weird. Maybe I should just get a little bit more out of there. All right, shouldn't take too much more. 20, ah, there you go, uh, 21.2. Didn't make a difference, 21.2 is close enough. All right, so, and I've uh, preheated some water here or we're heating up some water. It's at 201 and this is a, this is Big B Best. And so, which is um, a dark medium uh, coffee. And so we don't need it to be at the boil. We don't need it at 212. We actually need it just under 200. So I'm gonna set this at 199 right there. Okay. We're gonna bring our pur over back <laughs> and get our coffee in. Here, kitty, kitty. By the way, the coffee does smell great. Here, kitty, kitty, yes. So, you know, this product is silly. It's fun. And our question is, will it work? Right now, you can see when I poured it in, it's sort of a mountain of coffee. We just want to give it a shake and level it out. So maybe you're not a, a serious coffee maker if you use a pure over, pur over, use a pur over, <laughs> right? Uh, but I don't think that that's true. So far, I don't see anything that wouldn't make this serious. Uh, I would note that uh, the inside of this was smooth, whereas like the Melito and the Hario have little ridges. Uh, but because it's flowing so fast, I don't think that that's going to be uh, an issue. Okay, so there's always three uh, stages to a pour over or a pour over. Uh, the first one is to bloom, the, bloom coffee. the coffee, right? And that's usually about two times the amount of water by weight than the coffee. So we're just going to say 50 grams, kind of make it a round number, right? Because we're going to go up to 350 grams. And remember, that one gram of water is equal to one milliliter of water. So we could be talking milliliters or we could be talking grams. It would be interchangeable. So we're going to get our first 50 in. Oops, you know what? Excuse oh, good me. Idea. I was supposed to tear this out. And I have a little water in there. And I'm supposed to hit the timer when I go because we're going to bloom for about 30 seconds. Okay, so when I get to about you're at 30. Yeah, I'm gonna to go to 50. There we go, it's a little over 50. And you can see some bubbling going on. 
And when you see bubbling like that, that's just the CO2 and the nitrogen coming off. When you roast coffee, a lot of CO2 gets trapped in there. And we'll put a couple of episodes on other pour overs because there's a lot more detail to this than maybe I'm even going over today. And this might be too much for you even at that. So uh, we should let that go for about 30 seconds. It's been 40. Now we're going to pour two thirds of 350. Do you have any idea what that is? <laughs> it's about 250 total. And we're going to do this rather aggressively, right? So we want to, to almost churn that coffee up a little bit. We want to get some action. Remember, we're trying to dissolve the solubles in the coffee. That's the whole idea here. And so brr, let's, let's move those grounds around. And I'm at 210, let's say 250. Okay, so think about the first part, the bloom, kind of being like a volcano, right? You put the water in, all these gases come out, right? It's an eruption. The second part is like a fast moving stream going over pebbles and the pebbles are moving like that. That's what we want here. Now I'm going to give this a little bit of a swirl because we don't want the coffee to get caught up on the sides. And then the last part, this last 100 milliliters, this last 100 grams is simply about keeping the thermal load about the same, right? Keeping the temperature about the same and not so much about agitation. Okay. So it's a relatively slow pour all the way up to 350. And that's just in a circular motion from the outside in to the inside out. I keep hitting the cat's tail. Yeah, that is kind of a problem with our kettle. <laughs> Maybe it's me, you know? Maybe, just, yeah, stand at a different what angle. What am I at? 312? Okay. And so it's just a gentle pour at this point. 348. Yeah, I'm going to call it quits because I'm going to put extra. a little, well, yeah, I did <laughs> have a little extra in there. And our time right now is 239, right? 242 now. 242. And we would expect this to take about three minutes to get through. So we are using Big B Best today. And in that is Big B Best Farm Direct. 30% of Big B Best is Farm Direct. And that comes from a farm in Nicaragua called El Recreo. And that's owned by Leanna and Carlos Ferry. And the characteristic of that Nicaraguan coffee would be chocolate and nutty overtones. Now that's blended with some Tanzania pea berry at 70%, and that would be considered fruity. And Big B Best has been in our lineup since 1995, right? It's been a super popular blend. Actually, it's been the most popular uh, drip coffee blend we've ever had, right? We couldn't get rid of it if we wanted to. You can buy this bag this size on Amazon. I think it holds about, let's see, about 1,100 uh, grams of coffee. Hold on just a second. Are we at about 350? Uh, yeah, we're at 357. Okay, I think we're brewed at this point, so I don't think we're dripping anymore. You can come take a look at the bed. It should be flat. It's not the flattest bed. I didn't do the best job of stirring it around and we're that kind of thing. making a little thing. puddle. That's all right. I don't mind a little puddle. <laughs> you know, normally we would have something else to put this on in the kitchen. But the nice thing here with our pour over is it's ready to go. It's, it's in a cup already. And let's see how we did. We did perfectly. We did absolutely perfect. Okay. Well, silly but fun, the pour over. So I'm going to ask Michelle, is this something we keep? Is this something we give away? Or is this something we crush? Run over it with a car. No, no, no. It's, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that even to a fake cat. Yeah. So I think this is something we would give away. And I, I can imagine the person I'd give it to. We Ooh. have lots of younger people that we know in our lives that might be going off to college. I know one that's a big cat fan. He might even be our super intern. Oh, that's true. I could totally Carter, possibly, see giving that possibly, to Carter. Possibly, possibly. 
You know, uh, Carter's the exception, but normally, you know, we're dog people. And so there's dog <laughs> people and cat people, and cat people are a little less trustworthy generally <laughs> but than dog people. And no, that's not true. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to give it away. Do you like this, though? I think it's cute as a bug. Yeah, right? It's functional. It works. I like it. But you said we're giving it away. And on that note, when you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.